Welcome back to the Artful Teaching Podcast. This is Heather Francis. Again, I'm here solo just to introduce our content for this episode, which is recordings with Brenda Beall that we did last year at the end of 2022 to document and archive some of her wonderful thoughts about Native American curriculum, Indigenous pedagogy, and their relationship to arts education. So in our last episode, she talked about what Indigenous pedagogy is and how it's connected to the arts and arts education. And in this episode, we asked her about the Native American Curriculum Initiative and who it's for, who it benefits, and why teachers, administrators, parents, PTA, community leaders would be interested in the work that is being done in our initiative. She actually starts answering this question by inviting Emily Soderborg, who is the project coordinator with Brenda, to answer this question for herself. Emily is non-Native, and she speaks to her experience as a non-Native creating the materials for the Native American Curriculum Initiative and how it's benefited her. And then Brenda also speaks to her experience and how the vision of this initiative to amplify Native voices has benefited and impacted her in her own life. So without further ado, here is Brenda and Emily. The Native American Curriculum Initiative, otherwise known as NACI, is for non-Native and Native alike. Emily, how do you feel like NACI has helped you as a teacher and an educator? Working with NACI has opened my eyes to so many new ways of seeing things and of doing things. I feel a lot more confident in what I'm doing. I feel like I've been able to immerse myself more in understanding and sharing things in appropriate and accurate ways. Since I'm not Native and I I grew up with a lot of stereotypes in the learning that I was given, I think it's changed how I approach things and how I teach others around me. It's, It's made me more empathetic and more willing to try new things. I think NACI is for Native teachers and Native people because we strive to amplify our, the Native voice. And so having that feeling of being recognized and acknowledged is a way of reconciling some of the hard struggles in the past that has been invisible to so many people. We as a group, especially Native Americans, have been invisible because of other people's stereotypes or overgeneralization of of culture. And so I feel like NACI just helps to bring greater authenticity to Native people in general and I think what we're doing with lesson plans and curriculum building and developing resources, we are helping students to see themselves within the curriculum. They can see themselves in the books that teachers read or in content, and non-Native children can have a window into other perspectives and ways of living and knowing and doing other than the, what they were raised with. What I've loved is that as we we have worked with the eight sovereign nations, that the, the biggest thing they say is that we are still here, we want to be seen. So we're just amplifying that voice. And no matter whether it's for students having that voice amplified, no matter whether it's for teachers that they are amplifying that voice or for native artists, it's, it's for everyone to recognize that everyone has a voice, everyone has a right to be heard, and that as we, we work together, we can create awareness of others without lessening our own culture, without making things seem like it's not for us, but it is for us, all of it is, so that we can all recognize how we can learn from others, and how we can share with others.
I just love Emily and Brenda. If I could, I would like to add my own voice to theirs and talk about the impact Nisi has had on me. I also am non-native. I'm very interested in other cultures, and I want to understand people with different experiences better. So Nacy has been really enlightening for me because I didn't know very much about the Native American experience before this initiative came about. And I've spoken in past episodes about some misconceptions about Native American experience and Native American people that I had in the past when I was an educator. I think I shared the story of a student that I had in my dance class. Um, I taught middle school, and she she was quiet in class. She didn't really like move a whole ton. She seemed a little resistant. But then at an assembly, she performed with the Native American students at our school and performed a jingle dance. And I had no idea about her cultural experience that had this rich embodied movement practice. And I felt sad that I, I hadn't known that information yet. So I'm loving being a part of this initiative and learning from Brenda and Emily and our designers and our Native partners. But I also want to add that This initiative has provided a place, how do I say this? I have felt so safe emotionally in this initiative because some cultural questions are are very sensitive and I am not sure if I'm asking the cultural questions correctly. I don't know if I'm even allowed to ask. And Brenda and Callie and the whole NACI team has developed an environment where no question is a bad question and that curiosity is applauded and... Every time I have a question, it's like, thank you for asking. I I would love to clear that up or I'd love to tell you more. And that just feels really good. This initiative has provided a really safe place to ask hard questions, questions that are hard for me. And um, maybe they're not hard for other people, but I just wanted to offer that as well. So if you're a teacher who's interested in learning more about the Native Americans in your classroom and in your community, come join us for a workshop. Come look at our lesson plans. Email us. Talk to Brenda. Um, This is a really great place to ask your questions. A really, really good place to ask your questions is in our online course. It's a one credit PD course on Canvas. So you can also sign up for that. And that's a great place to get peer feedback and Brenda's feedback. And yeah, that's a great place. So, okay, moving on. The next question is, why is tribal approval on our educational materials so important? Here's what Brenda has to say. From the very beginning, when we started writing lesson plans, we knew that we wanted to go right to the source. We wanted to ask the questions, what would you like the children of Utah to know? And when we went to the tribes and we asked them these questions, they, all of the tribes gave us something different. And when we wrote the lesson plans, it was important to us that we had captured authentic voice. And so we went back to the tribes and we worked with them. We read the lessons. Every word was approved by the native tribes. And the reason why, when a teacher is teaching Damandoya, which is from the Northwestern band of the Shoshone Nation, and they are teaching the song that has been approved to sing by the Northwestern Band of the Shoshone Nation, they can feel confident. And so if someone comes in and says, I don't think this is appropriate for you to be singing this song, the teacher can say, I am using this lesson from this lesson plan, and right here it shares the tribal seal and it shows that this lesson was developed in partnership with and in collaboration with the Northwestern Band of the Shoshone Nation. And they reserve the right to be able to share this song with the children of Utah. That, that says a lot. That shows that you are being sensitive. That shows that you are trying to be authentic and as accurate as possible. And that shows that you have given your due diligence to teaching indigenous content in such a way that you are creating an environment where you are being inclusive in an authentic manner. So we spend a lot of time, like Brenda described, building relationships with our Native partners to make sure that they read every word of our educational products and that they 
approve of it and confirm that it is the story and information that they want shared about their tribe or their nation. And I love as an educator knowing that the tribes have approved this content. It does give me confidence. So if you experience using one of these lesson plans and feeling that confidence, we would love to hear about it. Please share with us through email or social media. The next question, though, is some of my favorite content that Brenda shares in her presentations and workshops. And this is about the different kind of Native voices you will encounter when doing research or determining what is accurate and authentic information about Native Americans. And so she talks about the difference between authentic voices, official voices, and culture bearers and knowledge keepers. In our work, we have included authentic voices, culture bearers and knowledge keepers, and official voices. And there are distinct differences between the three. An authentic voice is someone who has that lived experience. I'm going to give that example of my husband. My husband has the lived experience of going to a Native American boarding school at the age of five. And so his voice is authentic in that experience. I cannot speak to that. I do not have an authentic voice about boarding schools other than I live with a man who has experienced some historical trauma. And so lived experiences are authentic voices. Knowledge keepers and culture bearers are those within a tribe who are usually an elder, not always, but are people who have the responsibility of being knowledge keepers and teaching cultural ways to people. And so we have met with cultural bearers and knowledge keepers. Official voices are people within the tribal community who can speak for the whole tribe. Usually it's a tribal council, or it's a cultural specialist, or it's an education director. They are the ones who make a decision where they speak for everyone. In our lesson plans, we have all three voices. We have authentic voices, which are those who can speak to lived experiences. We have knowledge keepers and cultural bearers, and we have official voices. And that can be seen on the tribal seal that is on our lesson plans. Now, we do have general lesson plans that we have created where The official voice possibly could also bleed into the authentic voice. Take, for instance, our great American bison. We have gone to authentic voices and knowledge keepers and also accurate authentic sources, but it it would be really hard to get an official voice because we have 574 recognized tribes and so many who have had that experience with the bison and the transcontinental railroad. And so there are lesson plans where we don't have an official voice and we call those our general lesson plans. And you can find them all on our website. All right. Like Brenda said, go check out our tribe approved lessons and our general Native American lessons because we have all three voices represented in our lesson plans. Authentic, official and culture keepers are all um, represented in our our lesson plans. So that's it for this episode. Our next episode, we're going to look at Brenda's answers to the questions about why it's important to ask questions with genuine intent and to listen attentively. This is one of our guiding principles of the Native American Curriculum Initiative. And she'll also talk about the importance of looking at multiple perspectives when studying history. So we look forward to sharing that with you. And again, as always, hope you have an artful day. Artful teaching is made possible by the BYU Arts Partnership in the McKay School of Education.
Thanks to James Houston for editing this podcast. Music was generously provided by Connor Chi, a Navajo Diné composer and performer. And special thanks to all of the teachers who are changing lives every day while serving in schools. If you like what you heard, please leave us a review. You can find all the show notes for this episode and more resources at advancingartsleadership.com. And don't forget to check out our tribe-approved lesson plans on the website as well. I'm Heather Francis. And I'm Callie Flox. And I'm Brenda Bial. Wishing you an artful journey.